What's up, everyone? Justin here, back with a new fantasy booking show. My fantasy booking for Brett, the Hitman Hart in WCW. Because Brett's run, his uh, real run in WCW was absolutely bad booking and pathetic. They did not utilize Brett. They did not push him well. They did not know how to book him well. At least uh, Vince McMahon knew how to push Brett as a top main event guy. And uh, Vince knew he had to push Brett after uh, they didn't give the title to Lex Luger and going into WrestleMania 10, even at WrestleMania 9, Brett was a champ going in. But that's a long story. I could talk about Bret Hart's whole, whole legendary career. His WWF run was a really great Hall of Fame run. From, I want to say late 85 or early 86. He was in the WWF until 97. The end of 97. But this is about Bret Hart in WCW. I thought I had to book. I, I got to book a fantasy booking for Bret Hart in WCW. Because, in my opinion, my ideas are better than what WCW did with Bret. And he was probably held back. According to Eric Bischoff. He has said in interviews, in shoot interviews, Eric said Bret Hart was uh, miserable and depressed and didn't want to do anything and shot down every idea Bischoff had for him. He basically said Bret was depressed and a pain in the ass to work with and like didn't want to be there. Maybe that's true. I don't know, but he still could have been booked better. And I will say after Brett, before I start, I will say Brett was booked uh, pretty good after he won the world title. But sadly, his career ended because a Goldberg kicked him in his head and did not to work in the ring. Very sad. Brett was world champ and Goldberg ended his run in his career. That just sucks. Because if Brett never got his career ended, I think he could have still wrestled into like to like 2010. Or at least 2007, he still could have been taking some bumps. Or if Brett didn't have to retire, maybe could have worked some uh, Crown Jewel Saudi Arabia shows. They probably would have paid him like 3 or 5 million to show up, or 2 million. But, uh... Now to my fan, before I start, final thing I'll say, I've been going, I've been uh, going through a tough time, been very, very stressful on me with um, dealing with my family members. It's uh, been hard, but I'm not going to cry about it, I'm not going to crawl under a rock and hide from it or die and give up. Um, fine I'm still here I'm still fighting I still love my family but some of them got issues big time but um yeah if you want to know about it go read my Twitter I posted about I put out two tweets about it but uh this will make me feel better doing a fan a new fantasy booking show also watching wrestling you gotta, if you're unhappy in life, anybody out there, if you're unhappy, do stuff that makes you happy. Do your hobbies that makes you happy. Hang out with friends. Watch movies. I don't know, if you don't got any friends, talk to people online. If you don't talk to people online... I don't know what to tell you. Just do stuff that you enjoy and makes you happy. 
thank God I have a lot of hobbies where I, I don't get depressed for long. I got video games. I got pro wrestling. I got movies to watch. A ton of movies still to watch that I've ignored. But I'll get to them. Anyways, I'll be fine. Whoever tweeted me, uh, sending me positive thoughts in your prayers, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I will never leave Twitter and stop tweeting about pro wrestling, but I just felt, I don't know, today I felt very sad. But I eventually started watching SmackDown. So there we go, fantasy booking of Brett the Hitman Hart to start off 1998 in WCW because that's when he debuted. His debut match was at sold out 98. I know he debuted in 97, but that wasn't wrestling. So Brett, his uh, first appearance in WCW is not as a referee. Or a surprise run-in where he was a ref. I thought that was stupid. Anyways. Non-title match at WCW sold out. Sting was the world champ. So I'm going to fantasy book Sting is still a world champ. Sting in a non-title match takes on a debuting Brett the Hitman Hart makes his WCW debut Brett Hart versus Sting that's a fucking dream match for wrestling fans instead in the real WCW not fantasy booking they waited until fucking Halloween Havoc 98 to have Sting Brett, and then it didn't mean anything. It didn't even feel special. Nobody cared. Should have been a big, big, built up, big main event match on a pay per view for like Brett's debut. That's why I fantasy booked it. Brett Hart's debut against Sting non title match. Brett wins his debut. Up next, the Monday Nitro after sold out. Bret Hart and Sting team up to take on Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, the tag team champs, the Outsiders. So uh, Bret and Sting team up to challenge Hall and Nash for the tag titles on the Nitro after sold out. Brett and Sting win. They're the new tag champs. Let's go to the Nitro. Monday Nitro, the first week of uh, February, the first Monday of February, 98. And a six man tag. Main event, Bret Hart, DDP, Sting, team up to take on the NWO. To take on Randy Savage, Scott Hall, and uh, Nash. Runnings. What do you know? NWO runs in. Hollywood Hogan, Vincent, Stevie Ray do run in. Run ins and attack. Brett, DDP, and Sting. Disqualification. Finish. Let's go to Thunder. WCW Thunder, the fourth. Or the final Thunder of uh, February. For the tag titles, Bret Hart and Sting defend against the former champs again, the Outsiders. Hall and Nash. Referee takes a ref bump. NWO interferes. Hall and Nash. Referee wakes up Hall and Nash. Win the tag titles back. From uh, Sting and Bret Hart. Now let's go to WCW Uncensored. 98 in March. Where we have a War Games. A War Games matchup at Uncensored. Bret Hart. DDP. Sting and Goldberg. Team up. To take on NWO. Randy Savage. Scott Hall. Kevin Nash. And Hollywood Hogan. 
Bret Hart, Sting, Goldberg, DDP win War Games at Uncensored 98. Now let's go to the March Nitro. The Nitro after Uncensored. Where we have for the U.S. title, Bret Hart challenges Raven for the U.S. title. Bret Hart wins the United States Championship. Bret Hart is a U.S. champion. Right after Uncensored on Nitro. In the main event. Let's go to, I'm going to skip forward to the April pay-per-view. April 98 Spring Stampede. Bret Hart in a U.S. title rematch. Bret Hart takes on Raven in Raven's Rules. Bret wins. Still U.S. champ. Let's uh, skip forward to May. May WCW Nitro, let's say it's the first or whatever, any Monday of May before the end of the month. Bret Hart, or let's say it's the beginning of May. Bret holds the open challenge for the U.S. title. Bret Hart, Booker T. Booker T accepts a U.S. title open challenge. Bret Hart, Booker T on Nitro in May. Bret wins and retains. End of May, Monday Nitro, the final Nitro of May 98. Bret Hart defends U.S. title again. But first off, he cuts a promo, and then who attacks Bret from behind? The debuting Bam Bam Bigelow attacks Bret from behind during his promo and just beats the hell out of him. I know Bam Bam in real life came to WCW in like November 98 or December he showed up. I think November he showed up. I know he showed up at World War 3 98, but let's say Bam Bam showed up at the end of May in WCW. I don't I'm pretty sure he left ECW. I'm talking about in real life. I'm pretty sure he left because he wanted guaranteed money and probably got a sweet contract offer. And, of course, he would leave. But, uh, Brett, I think uh, Bam Bam said once, or I heard him say in an interview, rest in peace, Bam Bam Bigelow, one of the great big men of all time. I think I heard Bam Bam once say that uh, he was paid well in ECW and... He never got any bounced uh, checks, I don't think. A lot of guys did. Shane Douglas did, Lance Storm, and others. But, uh, yeah, the end of May on Nitro, Bret Hart promo, Bam Bam attacks him from behind and debuts. Now let's go to uh, the whole month of June. 98, Bret Hart is out of action selling the attack from Bam Bam Bigelow. Let's go to the July Great American Bash pay-per-view. Bret Hart returns to the ring. He's still the U.S. champ. Even though he could have been stripped because that rule should uh, used to be enforced. If you didn't defend your title in 30 days, you would be stripped. I'm not sure if WCW enforced it much, but I think they did. I know WWF used to, but not anymore. They do not care. You could go like two to three months without defending your title and you're not stripped of it. That stupid, bad, dumb booking. Anyways, uh... I say Great American Bash, I don't know, but July pay-per-view, Bret Hart, July 98, Bret is back, Bash at the Beach, 98, Bret Hart defends U.S. title against Bam Bam Bigelow, the man he wants revenge on, that attacked him in Bam Bam's uh, debut. Actually, you could say some might think Bam Bam in real life debuted in WCW at the end of 98. He did not. He was actually there before. At the end of 88. He was a part of Starcade 88. 
And he was he showed up in 1990 also. So he was in WCW before 98. There's a fun uh, fact if you didn't know. He wasn't there for long, but he was still there in 1990 and 88. So, uh, yeah, Bam Bam wins U.S. title. Is the new U.S. champion, Bam Bam Bigelow. Bret Hart moves on. And at the August pay-per-view road, Wyo 98, let's say it's in Canada, for the W, or actually before it, before Road Wild. Let's say like four weeks uh, before the pay-per-view, Road Wild in August. As I said, Road Wild, let's say it's in Canada. But four weeks before Road Wild, Bret Hart challenges... Hollywood Hogan for the world title. Let's say Hollywood Hogan got it back from Sting in 98 because he actually did, I believe. He, he did get it back, and then Goldberg defeated him. But in fantasy booking, Hollywood Hogan is still a champion in August 98 on my fantasy booking show. As I said, four weeks before Road Wild, Bret Hart challenges Hollywood Hogan and says to him, he says, uh, I never faced you because you know I'm the best there is, best there was, best there ever will be. And then Bret says, fight me in Canada at Road Wild for the title. And Hollywood Hogan accepts. So August, pay-per-view, 98, Road Wild, 98, Bret Hart, Hollywood Hogan for the WCW World Title. That's a hell of a main event. And WCW never did that main event on a pay-per-view. What a shame. Dumb booking. I don't know if egos, egos are probably out of control running wild in WCW 98. Hogan would have, I'm talking about real life, Hogan would have probably never agreed to lose to Brett, lose the title to him. But he lost the title to Goldberg. You, you can say a lot of shit about Hogan, that he's a backstabber backstage and plays politics, all that bullshit. But Hogan actually put over Goldberg on a Nitro for the world title, so... You can't say he's that damn stupid and evil when he put over Goldberg and he knew how hot and how super over Goldberg was. But this video is not about me putting over Hollywood Hogan. Yeah, he's he won too much in WCW, but he put over a few guys. Sting, Goldberg, I think uh, that's it. Sadly, I think he put over Warrior. Oh, that, that match was horrific and horrible at Halloween Havoc 98. One of the worst matches of all time. It's up there. But personally, one of the worst matches I've seen was on the Heroes of Wrestling pay-per-view in 99. Also, TNA had Charmel against a Survivor the show Survivor, some woman from Survivor, Jenna Moscow, whatever her name was. Jenna from Survivor against Charmel was god awful. One of the worst matches of all time. It was actually worse than Hogan Warrior at Halloween Havoc. Anyways, that ends my fantasy booking of Bret Hart in WCW in 1998. I didn't go to the end of the year because I didn't feel like it. Went from January to August, Road Wild. Bret Hart wins the world title from Hollywood Hogan in Canada at Road Wild. It definitely wouldn't have been in front of bikers if it was in Canada. Bret would have got a huge reaction. And uh, they actually were good with uh, putting the title on Brett in Canada in real life, but then sadly he had a short reign because stupid Goldberg ended his career. So I uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed my fantasy booking of Brett the Hitman Hart in WCW in 1998. I could have went on 
and booked to 99. Brett and WCW 99 or 2000, but that wouldn't have been easy because WCW is going downhill towards the end of 99 into the summer and 2000. They were a mess. <laughs> I'm actually glad Brett, not glad his career ended. That was tragic. But, Brett, you're actually lucky you didn't have to deal with uh, Vince Russo's shit booking in uh, 2000 and the end of 99 because he would have probably booked you like shit, in my opinion. He would have booked you badly. Probably. would have put you in the Millionaire's Club or some stupid bull crap like that. It's like he booked Flair, Ric Flair bad in 2000, booked Sting pretty bad, kind of. I like the Sting Vampiro feud, but Sting wasn't booked good in 2000. He booked Flair, Sting, Hogan like shit. And they did not deserve to be. They were all still in their 40s, I believe. Or Sting was the youngest of Hogan and Flair. Anyways, hope you enjoyed my fantasy booking of Brett the Hitman Hart in 1998 in WCW after a road wild. I would have had him probably hold the title. For at least six months or longer. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye for now.